I know y'all are probably looking for a Father's Day gift, but don't worry, I got you. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to create this custom liquor label using Procreate and Canva. So let's get into it. First up, we're gonna prep our bottle. So basically, we just wanna remove this front label. So just make sure the label is completely submerged in water. And then after a good amount of time, the label should just rip off like this, real easy. And I know the video just started, but I already made a mistake. Try not to take off the back label because we actually want that to stay on. It'll be like a cool see-through effect in the end. Next, let's make this burnt label. We need this label to be a specific size, so we're gonna create a new canvas. So press the new canvas icon in the top right-hand corner, and when the dialog box pops up, make sure you have inches selected. Now we're just gonna type in the dimensions three inches by 4.75 inches, and it's very important that you set the DPI to 300 because that's the standard for printing. Also, my color profile is set to RGB, which isn't for printing, but I mean, it worked for me, so. Anyways, just press create, and here's our new canvas. So I think it would be really helpful to have a reference image so I can draw this label. So to add a reference image, just go to settings, canvas, and then turn on the reference toggle. In the new dialog box, switch it over to image, and then press import your image, which will bring you right to your photo library. All right, so let's start drawing. I'm gonna use the fine tip pen found under inking to draw the outline of our label. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, um, you know, just drawing in all these crispy curves, making it look real rigid, and you know, just using the reference image as a guide. You'll also notice that there's little burn holes throughout the label, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some of those as well. And quick side note, when you're drawing in these burn holes, try not to draw them too small, because just know you're gonna have to cut these out later. And if they're really small, it'll be really hard to cut them out. This is looking pretty good, so I'm gonna fill in our shape with black to get rid of the outlines. And obviously the label is not black, so we're gonna choose a nice golden color from the label. Just use your finger to press and hold on the reference image to eye drop your color. Now let's add in the burnt effect that you can see around the edge of the label. I'm just gonna grab a dark brown color and I'm gonna use this soft brush, which is found in the airbrush brush group. So before we start drawing this burnt effect, let's create a new layer and I'm just gonna rename mine burnt for now. So now you can just start filling in the edges, adding in this nice burnt effect. And you'll notice this kind of ruins the edges of our label that we drew. So to fix that, we're gonna create a clipping mask on our burnt layer. And that basically means that anything we draw on the burnt layer is going to stay within the shape below it. So you'll notice no matter how wild I draw, it all stays within the yellow label shape that we created. And don't forget about the little burnt holes. I'm just gonna go around and add a little burnt color to the edges of each burn hole. So as I was looking at this reference image, I noticed there was just a little bit of orange around the edges as well. So here you see I'm just grabbing an orange color and just lightly brushing the edge to add a nice gradient to this label. And that's a wrap when it comes to this label. I'm just gonna turn off the background layer so the background is transparent. And then I'm gonna save this out as a PNG. So just go to settings, share, and click PNG. And now just decide where you wanna save this to. I'm gonna send this to my laptop so that I can use it on Canva, but honestly, I think you can do that on your iPad too. Cool, so we're done with the label and we have one more thing to create in Procreate, which is Yo Daddy's face. We're gonna create this in a new canvas, but we're gonna use the same size as our label. And you should be able to just find that at the very bottom of the list of sizes. And of course you can use a reference image if you prefer. So go to settings, add, and then press insert photo. You'll instantly be brought to your photo gallery, so just select the image that you wanna use. So I don't need this entire image, so I'm just gonna use the selection tool to select around the parts of the image I want. And then I'm gonna go into the layers panel and press mask, which will basically get rid of all of the areas that I don't need right now. I only did this because I think it's a little less distracting when it comes to drawing. And it also allows you a little more space to scale up the image. And one more thing before I start drawing, I just like to lower the opacity of the image a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's add a new layer. I'll name mine outline just so we can stay a little organized. And I think I'm gonna use the technical pen under the inking brush group, but just kind of play around with brushes to see which one you like. And if you ever have trouble drawing smooth lines, just go into the brush settings 
and adjust the stabilization under the stabilization tab. Anywhere from like 50% or so, just play around with that. So once you have your perfect brush all finessed and figured out, we're gonna start outlining our image. So one rule of thumb I like to follow when I'm drawing these portraits is basically use thicker lines for more important details and use thinner lines for more less important details. So for example, I'm using thicker outlines on the outer edge of this portrait. I'm also using thicker lines like around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And then you'll see I start using thinner lines for the details such as like the wrinkles around the eyes, the wrinkles around the mouth, and so on. But honestly, this is just one style of cartooning. There are so many styles, and like for example, you could draw a cartoon that uses lines of all the same thickness. It's just all your preference, basically. All right, so next up, I'm gonna start on the facial hair. So I'm gonna add a new layer. I basically add a new layer every time I start a new object, just because I think there's more flexibility if you need to edit that object. Like for example, let's say that I finish this entire portrait and look back and see that, wow, that mustache looks absolutely horrible. I think it takes away from the drawing. Well, if I had the mustache on a separate layer, it would be as simple as deleting the layer. Whereas if I had the mustache on the outline layer, it might take a while for me to like carefully erase each mustache hair. All right, so here's the last shape of this image. As you can see, I'm missing part of the hat because it's hidden underneath the sombrero. Yeah, I'm just gonna basically have to fake it till I make it here. So as I was looking at this, I felt like the hat needed some more dimension since it's, you know, just like a flat black shape right now. Um, so I'm just gonna go in with my eraser and kind of separate out the hat bill from the rest of the hat. And lastly, I thought it was really important to include my dad's hand in this portrait because this is his thing. It's like his signature. Um, every photo, he's probably throwing up the deuces. So definitely had to include that in this portrait. Huh, you thought we were done with this? No, this can't be a fireball label without some flames. So I'm just gonna pull up my fireball reference image and I'm just gonna swipe some of these flames so we can add them to our portrait. Once again, I'm just gonna draw around the area that I need and this time I'm just gonna copy and paste it onto a separate layer. So just kind of figure out the size and placement of these flames. I thought it'd be perfect to have these coming off of my dad's hat. So before you start drawing, add a new layer and just kind of do your best to trace along the reference image. I know I had so much fun drawing these flames. I don't know if it's because of all the curves, but yeah, I love drawing flames. When you're finished, just kick that reference image to the curb and let's finesse these flames. So once again, I just wanted to add a little more dimension to the hat. So I went to the hat layer and just started erasing a few areas to give dimension to the flames. So to finish up, what I'm gonna do is flatten all of these layers together. But first, I'm a scaredy cat, so I'm actually going to group these layers together and then duplicate that group and then flatten one of the groups. So as you can see, I have the flattened group on top and then the backup group behind. I hope that made sense. Since everything's nice and flattened onto one layer, I can simply drag and drop the fireball red onto our portrait. Just hold down with your Apple Pencil and slide to the right to fill in all the shapes on the layer. I feel like I keep on saying the last thing we're gonna do, but the last thing we're gonna do is turn off the background so that we have a transparent image. And then I'm gonna save this out as a PNG. So just go to Settings, Share, and click PNG. And once again, we're gonna save this image on our laptop. So here I'm just airdropping it to myself once again. And now it's Canva time. And you guys, I made it super easy for you. You can honestly just go down to the links panel and pick up the art that I already created. To start, we're gonna press create a design in the top right hand corner and then press custom size. I'm just gonna set this up to eight and a half by 11 because that's probably the size that most printers can print out. Make sure it's set to inches and then press create a new design. 
So here we see our fresh new page that we need to add our label to. So we're gonna go to the toolbar on the left hand side and press uploads. And then you just simply drag your label into the uploads panel. Now just click on the label to add it to your blank page. And right away I can tell this is way bigger than the label should be. So I'm just gonna use the rulers on the top and left hand side to scale it back down to the three by 4.75 size. And if you guys aren't seeing rulers on the sides, just go to file and then press show rulers and guides. Now once your label is back to the correct size, I'm just going to center it. You'll see these little guides popping up that show that, yes, it's perfectly centered. And you guys, look at this. Our label is looking real good so far. So you should be proud. Anyways, let's dress this up with some nice type and yeah, make it look more realistic. I scrolled through the fonts and the closest font I could find to the Fireball font was called Lazord Slab Serif. And to create this fancy arcing effect, just press effects and then just adjust this curve toggle at the bottom of the panel. And as you can see, this is your opportunity to customize this label and have it say whatever you want. So I typed in happy Father's Day to the best dad, of course, and then I just put the year, which is 2022. So once again, the fonts can be changed up here. I used the Zord Slab Serif for the headers, and then I used BD Sands for the year and the alcohol percentage. And like I said before, guys, I have this design already saved out, so you can just grab it in the links panel below if you want to. And of course, all you'll need to do is drop in your own customized portrait. So once again, you just simply drag it into the uploads panel, drop your data into place, you know, just make it look good. And lastly, you guys know how that little fireball dude shows up on the backside of the bottle? Insert image here. Well, if you guys want to do that too, just add a second page to your Canva document, copy your portrait by pressing Command C, and then press Command V on the second page. I want my portrait to be black like the original label, so I'm gonna go to Edit Image, and I'm gonna slide the brightness down to negative 100, the contrast up to positive 100, and the saturation down to negative 100. And that should make it completely black. Once you're finished with your design, just go back out to the home page, then press download on your design, select print PDF because we're gonna print this, and then lastly, press download. That'll download your PDF straight to your desktop. And from there, you know, you just gotta print this bad boy. So to be honest, I don't have a printer at home. So I usually just pop it onto my flash drive and ask someone at FedEx to help me print it out. So when you print this out, just make sure that you do full color, do two-sided and use glossy paper. Once you get your print out, it's time for a little arts and crafts. So. Just take your time, cut this out as well as you can. Not gonna lie, it is a little difficult, especially when it comes to cutting out the little holes. But one little tip that I found is just cut it out as good as you can, and then use a little black marker to fill in the little white areas that you might've missed. But anyways, once you're happy with your cutout, just dab some glue on the backside. I'm using some Mod Podge, but you could honestly use any kind of glue. And then you just slap this bad boy in the middle of your bottle. Honestly, just try to be as clean as possible because I did get a little glue everywhere, but just take your time and you should be fine. And this is how you do it, guys. Um, I hope you try it out. Let me know if this works for you. And until next time, peace out. And yeah, I should probably say that you have to be 21 years old to purchase liquor. Yes, responsibly, you know, all of that important stuff. But anyways, later, dude.